वेलकम टू लेक्चर 59 व्हिच इज ऑन द ट्रांसपोर्ट रूट प्लानिंग यूजिंग ज्योमेट्रिक्स इंजीनियरिंग सो इन दिस लेक्चर अगेन दिस इज द एप्लीकेशन बेस्ड लेक्चर दैट हाउ इन द ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सेक्टर वेदर इट इज फॉर ट्रांसपोर्ट प्लानिंग और ट्रांसपोर्ट मैनेजमेंट हाउ दिस टेक्नोलॉजी कुड बी यूज इफेक्टिवली सो लेट अस लर्न दैट एज यू कैन सी दैट द रोड नेटवर्क कैन बी आइडेंटिफाइड very easily from the satellite images available at different resolution so if you want to find out the uh, every each and every street we have to go for high resolution data but if we want to see only the major routes in the area then probably the medium resolution data is quite helpful to us now you can see that uh, uh, iconos data has been used here to carry out the mapping of uh, the road network so iconos data is a high resolution data so we can identify uh, major and minor road streets etc etc from this so this identification uh, when it is done it is done actually by on screen digitization heads up on screen digitization but there are techniques available by which automatically one can detect the linear features from the satellite images so one has to use the different um, filters and different algorithms in order to identify the linear features but this is the result of the heads up digitization work you blow the image on your computer screen and and carry out the with the help of the cursor or the stylus pen carry out the digitization work so when you do that and you try to compare with your existing old map and the old data so you can see that how much is the growth which has taken place over a period of time so one can find out which are the new roads which have come up uh, in that time frame and how much is the total length of the road which has been constructed so one can identify very easily the change analysis in a given area we know that the global positioning system is a very very useful device uh, which can give us the coordinates of uh, the features so suppose you have to carry out a survey for the road so one of the ways could be if uh, the segment of the road is quite long then one of the ways could be that you have a vehicle based survey vehicle mounted survey you mount the instruments on the vehicle as has been done here on the rooftop you can see the receiver uh, and controller is actually mounted near the window and uh, vehicle uh, is driven to the area and collect, the gps will collect the data you can see the uh, road network uh, which has been followed by the vehicle it is shown by the red and the green color so if you know you don't have the error in the gps data sets if both geo referenced image and uh, this data would exactly match over each other now there are many many uh, utilities which are buried by the side of the road and once these utilities are to be installed or they are to be repaired there is a lot of damage to the road side so because the utilities are on both sides of the road and sometimes you are not able to pinpoint the fault in the utility so trial and error procedure is used uh, which can damage the road uh, quite frequently uh, some activity or the other activity is going on along the road side so this gpr instrument is very very useful to determine the what are the utilities under the road whether the utilities are running parallel to the road or they are crossing somewhere the road that can be identified with the help of the ground penetrating radar devices so if you see the profile which you get from the ground penetrating radar results because it's the radio waves which will actually travel to the ground and uh, they will give you the signal so you can see some kind of a signal map as you see on the top image here and if uh, um, there is a pipeline which is uh, going below the road across the road and creating a sinkhole in the road as you can see here and this uh, curve is showing some kind of a depression here 
so you are not getting a very smooth horizontal line but you are getting a depression and that depression is indicating that probably uh, something is wrong at this particular location and because of that the road is damaged at that point so maybe there's a pipeline and there's a water leakage at this point and because of the seepage activity which is taking place at this particular location the uh, road is sinking into the ground so you can find out the actual cause with the help of the gpr results uh, using the known destructive method of testing now the uh, gis in transportation engineering is used nowadays for a very very large number of activities uh, geometrics engineering as a whole we can use it for real time traffic monitoring activity or if we have to do the strategic traffic management in the area if we want to carry out some kind of a demand modeling or we want to carry out some kind of a static network network of the road so for a large number of activities now uh, you use various uh, geometrics engineering tools and techniques and you are collecting the relevant data and some data will definitely come to the field come from the field as far as the traffic density traffic volume is concerned and then uh, you can uh, feed that data into the uh, gis environment and carry out some of those operations but uh, some of the transportation based models modeling which you can do in the gis may be the shortest path in the routing algorithm uh, very important applications which has been done and people are a lot of people are using using the uh, google then spatial interaction models one can create network flow problems one can deal with that you can have facility location problem travel demand models you can also estimate how much will be the travel uh, uh time required to that area and what is the travel demand to that particular locations then land use transportation interaction models you can generate so as far as the road transport is concerned uh, one of the tools which is the drone uh, uav systems as you can see here that there are different uh, drone systems uh, some at the higher elevation and some are little lower elevation and they are continuously monitoring various kinds of a traffic uh, including the cyclist and uh, the different types of vehicles etc and then continuously you know they are communicating with the gadgets on the vehicle and then the entire information is sent actually to the control room so uh, as far as the vehicle to vehicle distance monitoring this is concerned that can be done traffic counting traffic monitoring can be done now one can identify the registration number of the plate in the vehicle with the help of such uh, high resolution images taken by the drones so for large number of activities uh, related with the traffic these uh, drones are playing very very important role because you can fly it at a very very low altitude so they can collect very very high resolution data for each and every vehicle one can also find out what is the speed of the vehicle you can see in the right picture with the help of that uh, one can uh, drone is continuously collecting the data about each and every uh, vehicle and monitoring the movement of the each and vehicle and over speeding vehicle are also located or if the driver behavior is slightly different that is also identified with the help of those drones now when we want to align a particular route and in particular in hilly terrain it's a real challenge problem so defining a route aligning a new route in a plain area is simple but in hilly terrain it is bit complicated so here the uh, remote sensing gis and other data they are playing very important role so i give you the example of connecting uttarkashi and kedarnath by a new alignment of the road at present um, there is a very long detour actually to go to both the places there is no shortest route between the two because of the intervening terrain and the um, 
uh, river network uh, which exists between the two hills. So, uh, can we do something, can GIS, remote sensing and geometrics tool can help us to make some kind of a alignment which will meet the engineering criteria, topographic criteria, geologic criteria uh, in order to determine the new route which satisfy all the requirement. So, this shows the methodology and the methodology is using the multi criteria because you have to use several criteria uh, to integrate those parameters. So, we call it the multi criteria based route alignment where different parameters which are input to this approach they are given a certain weights and they are given a certain ranking depending upon their importance to the hill uh, to the planning of the road in the hilly region. So, example is here that the slope is taken, the land use is taken, lithology of the area, soil map, landslide hazard, zone map, aspect map, lineaments map. So, there are different layers and from where this data would come? The data would come from the geometrics engineering tools and techniques which you have learned in the previous lecture. So, you can create the data, you can update the existing maps and once you have generated all the data in the GIS, then you would like to club them together, integrate them together by giving a certain, first of all you have to define a certain rank to each of the parameter. The slope for example, may have 5 classes. So, we have to give preference to a particular class, more preference to a particular class and least preference to another class. So, we have to define that and give the ranking and then out of the 8 parameters which you are taking for analysis, you have to define that which one you want to give the highest weights. So, maybe you will not give equal weights to each of the parameter. So, according to the application according to the uh, topography of the area, you would like to give certain weights to higher weights to certain parameters and lower weight to other parameters. So, this is all basically which you are doing through the entire process once you have defined the weights here and once you have defined the ranking of the each parameter between uh, 0 to 9 scale, then you will like to use certain kind of a multi criteria tool. So, this multi criteria tool could be analytical hierarchical process or there are other statistical process which are called rank sum method, rank reciprocal method, rank exponent method and the ratio estimation method. These are the different approaches where you can club the data using the multi criteria. And then on the basis of that you can find out which is the shortest path, which may be more than one path you can identify and then you narrow down your approach, you further refine your approach and see which is giving you the least cost, which is giving the shortest path, which is crossing the minimum number of rivers, which will have the minimum number of bridges of the shortest span, which is covering the large number of villages, which is connecting the tourist spots. So, all that once you carry out the analysis, at the end you can get the best single path. So, that is the way the whole uh, methodology uh, is proposed and uh, quickly if I show you the different maps, which are created now in the uh, GIS environment. This is the existing road network map. Okay, so, what is the existing road scenario in the area that you can identify from the satellite image? Then maybe once you created the different maps, you would like to uh, create some kind of a graphic user interface, where in the graphic user interface you can select for multi criteria based alignment, you can select the number of parameter, is a, you can see all the tick marks, the slope, land use, drainage, landslide, hazard, zonation, geology, faults, liniment, soil, aspect, they are all selected. So, you can actually carry out some kind of experiment also that if uh, you do not select one of the maps, if you consider only 7 maps, if you consider only 6 maps, what will be the impact on my output? And these are the different methods 
रैंक सम मेथड रैंक रेसिप्रोकल मेथड रैंक एक्सपोनेंट रेशियो एस्टिमेशन एंड एनालिटिकल हायरसिकल प्रोसेस सो दिस इज ए ग्राफिक यूजर इंटरफेस यू कैन डिजाइन इन द जी आई एस एनवायरमेंट एंड देन यू कैन डेवलप सम काइंड ऑफ ए मल्टी क्राइटीरिया वेटेड सिस्टम सो दिस इज द एनालिटिकल हायरसिकल प्रोसेस मैथड सो दिस एनालिटिकल हायरसिकल प्रोसेस विल डिफाइन द वेट्स इन प्रपोर्शन to the importance of these parameter so if you see the weights different weights which are calculated by statistically by statistical methods for all the five methods they are given in the table and here one thing is important to note that the slope in all the methods has been given the highest weighted so when we are talking of the alignment of the road in the hilly area probably this is the most important parameter and then uh, after that is the land use then comes the drainage part uh, the channels river then landslide hazard zonation because many areas hilly areas are landslide hazard prone then lithology then afterwards is fault then liniment and slope and then lastly the aspect so this is the kind of the ranking which you come up with the parameter now you have to create a database and this database should be geographically referenced to each other so this is a a contour map now this is directly from the uh, topographical map uh, you uh, identify the contours and then you actually uh, create a digital elevation model of the area so you can see the value is as high as 6800 Uh, meter above the mean sea level and the different colors are indicating the different height zones in the area now this using this digital elevation model uh, you create a tin model and from the tin model now you create a slope map of the area so you identify uh, which are the areas which have the high slopes which are the areas which have moderate or the low slope area so naturally we will like to go for uh, low slope areas from where the alignment should pass so you can actually uh, select those areas when carry out the analysis give more weights then aspect map so aspect is the uh, uh, orientation of the terrain with respect to its uh, you know the compass direction so these are the different eight directions eight colors are indicating the eight different directions of the terrain then the drainage map is important because the uh, route the proposed route should not pass so many drains so many uh, river so many streams uh, because the number of bridges uh, which will be uh, constructed or number of culverts which would be constructed would be much much higher then you calculate the drainage density maps from that so wherever the drainage density is poor Uh, maybe you like to go for those area drainage density is high maybe you like to avoid then fault buffer zone so fault along the this is a line feature so you are creating a buffer so that um, you try to avoid you know go away from those buffer so these are those areas which you can avoid similarly the liniments part so you create a liniment buffer and try to avoid a route passing through those then geology is very important as far as the landslide hazard zonation is concerned or the stability of the slope is concerned so different geological features which are present in the area are shown here uh, different kind of the soil maps in the area then the satellite image now this is the uh, a uh, satellite image which is draped on the dm so that is why you can feel uh, the ups and downs in the area you can see that there are certain portions which is higher and the certain portion which is in the lower portion and you have marked the two places the uttarakashi place and the kedarna they are to be joined together you cannot join them by a straight line because there are so many uh, hill slopes are there between the two points now this is the irs panchromatic data uh, which uh, is a better resolution data which you can actually drape on the dm in order to visualize the whole terrain in the third dimension this is the land use and land cover map which you can create from the satellite image which i have shown you then landslide hazard susceptibility map it is a combination of again several parameters 
so you require the geological characteristics drainage also you require the land use and then you create some kind of a landslide hazard susceptibility map and your route should pass through those areas where the susceptibility is low then uh, the different methods which uh, one can use to integrate this data together different layers together and uh, one by one in the ratio estimation method uh, the route uh, which satisfying the criteria is shown by the blue color here so uttarkashi is been joined by the uh, kedarnath by some kind of a zigzag route using ratio estimation method but if we use the rank reciprocal method the second method the route is different now so we can see the yellow line and this is the yellow line which is taking a detour particularly at this point uh, so this is following a altogether a slightly different route then the third method was ratio exponent uh, path uh, again it is showing the connection between the two and the green line is indicating the path which has been proposed by this method then rank sum method as proposed uh, light blue color here so this light blue color is also slightly detour towards the northern side shifted now if you compare all together there are five routes you superimpose them together compare all them together you can find out that particularly in the middle part of the region um, they are now away from each other but if you see the uh, last end which is connecting the kedarna they they are more or less overlapping and following the same route so one can find out the best out of these once you have the alternate maybe the um, on the basis of the minimum length on the basis of the minimum number of the bridges and the culverts which are required along the route maximum connectivity to the people maximum connectivity to the surrounding tourist spot and uh, ultimately the minimum cost of the route so on the basis of that one can decide the best route and carry out more detailed analysis this is uh, the example of a road information system so people have developed um, the information system because the time to time they will provide you the related information you can make a query or you can make a selection of the information once you have the entire database so this is the database of a road information system of the district ghaziabad so this is the uh, complete uh, ghaziabad district which is in uttar pradesh and you can see uh, the several uh, images of irs p6 list 4 images uh, have been used and they are mosaic together and the study area has been extracted from that data so several images are used together and these images uh, uh, were used actually to carry out certain analysis you can identify the different kind of roads various kind of road network uh, with the help of these images supported by the topographical maps then you create the existing railway line what are the uh, railway lines how much is the length in that particular area then culvert different culverts at different locations uh, one can identify and here all the dots and dots which are shown here they are showing the location of the culverts in the area then bridges layer then number of bridges how many bridges are uh, there available there or under construction or under repair all that information then the settlement layer settlement means the habitations so there are villages in the area there are some towns in the area so all that uh, have been mapped and shown in the settlement layer then the slope of the area is uh, how much is the slope in the entire area so the contour map will give you that these are some of the spot elevation point through which you can create a digital elevation model of the region and once you create this digital elevation model then you know uh, the uh, slope information the aspect information of the so you are creating um, the gis database of those special layers which i have shown but on the background here these are the different tables attribute tables which are created by the database and you can enter the data from your field like the year of construction of the bridge and the 
also the material which has been used or the cost of the bridge when it was constructed. So, lot of other things are there which you can add into your database and this database you can link as you have learned with the help of the primary key and the foreign key. You can link, you can make a relational database and then you can uh, make a query from the entire system after linking the database. So, this is a query 1 here. Now, the query 1 is very, very simple. This is a SQL sequential query language or the standard query language and here you can see there is an expression here. So, this expression one has to create. So, user has to learn that how to create that expression in the uh, software itself and it is very simple to learn and the query here is very simple. We want to know bridges which are spans have greater than or equal to 60 meter. So, there are bridges in the areas where the span is less than 60 meter, but there are bridges which have uh, 60 meter or more span. So, we have made a simple SQL query here and once you make that SQL query, you will get the data in the form of the table and also you can get the map. So, this is the output which you can get from that. So, this in this output, the uh, line which are highlighted are the details of that bridge and the point feature which is highlighted now here is indicating the actual location of that. So, I will show you the zoom location of that. So, now you can see that these arrows are indicating in the zoom location that these are those locations, these are those points where the bridge uh, length is more than 60 meter span. So, one can get actually this kind of a output desired output from the data. Now, Another example SQL that we want to locate the bridges in the Loni block. So, in Ghaziabad district there are many blocks, developmental blocks. So, we have a Loni block we want to identify uh, that how many bridges are there. So, we have made a very very simple SQL language query and once you make that query then the software what will do it will identify the number of bridges. It will highlight these lines in my attribute table data as well as it will show here the bridges in a different color, the bridges which are uh, available in the Loni block. So, it will not select the other bridges. So, if I show you the uh, zoomed view of that area, so it is showing that there are 12 bridges in the Loni block alone. So, very, very simple kind of a SQL query has been made from this data set and this indicates the results of my query in the data. So, to summarize the whole thing that uh, the GIS or geospatial tools now can be successfully used when we are talking of the transportation planning, when we are talking of the transportation management of the area, we have to collect the data input data which is required for a particular application from the different sources and these sources could be either the ground based uh, survey method or it could be the aerial based data collection approaches or directly uh, we can actually use laser based method or satellite images and create the data in the GIS environment according to the layers which are important and maybe some of the layers are most important, some of the layers are least important. So, according to the weightages to these layers, we can define the numerical weights and according to the class in each of the map like slope. I want slope between 0 to 15 degree for a uh, road alignment. So, I will give the higher weightage to this category of the slope. I will give the lower weightages to higher slopes area. So, we give higher weightages to the preferred area and the lower weightage to the non preferred area and when we club them together, when we integrate them together, then rankings and the weights are playing very, very important role to my output. If proper ranks and proper weights are not given, then probably the output which we are getting may not be very accurate output. So, it what is important is that once we determine the output, once we get the output, we have to cross check in the field. 
we have to carry out some kind of a ground truth verification from the reference data so that we are sure that the model which we have selected the ranks and weights methods which we have selected is quite satisfactory it is um, acceptable and the results are quite accurate from that you can carry out um, from this geomatics tool uh, planning of the new routes widening of the existing routes so you want to improve the curvature or maybe you want to improve the bumping in the roads you know there are certain roads when you travel on the road they are bumpy so their profile uh, is to be corrected uh, so that the, there are no waves ups and downs along the profile uh, of the road so uh, that also can be carried out with the help of the geomatic tool drone is found to be very very effective when we are talking of the traffic management uh, in terms of the traffic regulation following the traffic regulation or maintaining the speed suppose somebody is over speeding so low flying drone can very easily identify the registration number of the vehicle who is over speeding uh, the drone can also identify the behavior of the driver suppose someone is driving very rash and overtaking all the time without bothering the traffic rules so one can identify drone can identify or pinpoint certain vehicles so if, as far as the traffic management is concerned the drones are playing effective role so overall the geomatics engineering are playing a big role in different activities of the uh, traffic planning traffic management traffic and monitoring etc etc so this is all about this lecture thank you